I have this to say to the modern young girl, gentlemen. Be free. Express yourself. Take your life in your own hands and mold it. The world will try to rob you of your freedom, but fight for it. It's all you have to live for. All the obituaries identified Eleanor Parker as the actress who played Elsa in The Sound of Music. The Baroness, who releases her fiancé, Captain Von Trapp, Christopher Plummer, from his vows so he can marry Julie Andrews' singing ex-nun. That's a little like elegizing Paul Newman for his popcorn. Okay. Hi everyone, welcome back to That's All for the Modern Girl. My name is Caitlin and I'm so happy to have you. Today starts off the first in the Highlights of Hollywood Heroines series, and I am so excited. Now, as you may have recognized from the intro, today I'll be talking about Eleanor Parker, the actress who played the Baroness in The Sound of Music, all the while recreating an inspired look of hers. I'll be covering some basics of her story, how she ended up in Hollywood, why she was a reluctant Hollywood star, and address the elephant in the room, or or should I say tip of the iceberg? Yeah. Anyways, whichever, let's get started. So the outfit that I'm going to be recreating in this video comes from this photo that I showed earlier of Eleanor with Friedrich and Marta on the lot where The Sound of Music was being filmed. It is a simple outfit, a black cardigan, also turtleneck, and black pants and black flats. All things that I felt were attainable for me to be able to find to make this video. A pretty classic look as it is, but I'm also gonna be honest with you, I chose this because there really was not a lot to pick from as far as clothes that Eleanor wore off screen. And I'll get into that later, but it's pretty much because she really did keep a low profile when she was not working. She was not one to seek out the spotlight. There are not a lot of candid photos of her or pictures of her when she is not in a glamour shot or on the screen. So when it came to picking something out, this is the one that I felt best suited my style and was one that I would be able to recreate in a video. What I like the most about this outfit is the sweater. I liked that it was this combination of a thick, chunky turtleneck and a cardigan, something that I really hadn't seen a lot or really even thought of. And so when I saw that sweater, I was intrigued and wanted to see if I could find one that looked similar. The black pants I knew I already had. Check. As well as the black flats. Check. The sweater I did need to go and track down. I headed out to a few thrift stores to see what was out there and if I could find any close matches. While that's being taken care of, let's go check out the early part of Eleanor's life. Why, you don't look or act a bit like a motion picture star, people invariably tell her. She gives a sickly grin, looks embarrassed, and feels as though it's her sacred duty to grow instantly two heads. Let's begin with some basics. Born Eleanor Jean Parker in Cedarville, Ohio on June 26, 1922, Eleanor grew up in Ohio where her dad was a math teacher and her mom was a housewife. By her accounts in early fan magazine articles, she was a rough and tumble tomboy, saying, Girls didn't like me. I got along better with the boys. I was a hellion. I was mean and dominating. Boys never held grudges. They'd forgive and forget. In addition to her rough and tumble street cred on the streets of Ohio, Eleanor knew what she wanted to be when she grew up. From early on, she had a desire to be an actress, idolizing stars such as Janet Gaynor. While her early adolescence may have been dominated by a confident demeanor, she quickly did a 180 in middle school. <laughs> oh boy, don't we all? She attributed it to showing off around an older boy who consequently wrote her off, saying he detested silly girls. Eleanor recalled it as a mortifying experience, and from then on, she was quiet reserved and painfully shy. 
She continued to harbor a deep desire to be an actress, though, although she didn't talk about that to anyone anymore. That is, except her mother, who encouraged her to take classes and try out for shows. To make good on that dream of hers, she became involved in school plays, community theaters, and did tons of summer stock. She worked as a waitress while performing at Rice Summer Theater in Martha's Vineyard, and it was there she made a friend who was also doing summer stock and, coincidentally, was from California. Her friend invited her to come stay with her family and join her in studying at the Pasadena Playhouse. There, Eleanor went, and there she was spotted by a Warner Brothers scout and signed to a contract on June 26, 1941, what happened to be her 19th birthday. Meanwhile, so jumping back to the search for the sweater, I ended up going to three different thrift stores and I found a close match at each of them. The first one that I found was this sort of, oh, gray, black and white yarn mix. I don't, I don't know. I don't even know what you would call it, but the sleeves, the sleeves were strange. They were like half sleeves. It's like they couldn't make up their mind what they were going to be or as if whoever was making it got tired and decided to make them <laughs> sort of, I don't even know, I wouldn't even call it a full like short sleeve. Um, anyways, I was trying to talk myself into that one, but really it was not going to happen. Uh, my idea was that if that was the best that I could find, that I would just go ahead and uh, experiment with some black dye to get it to match her sweater. Um, but ultimately went on to the next door where I found a, another close match in this sort of burnt orange style. But again, it had these very strange sleeves that were not it again looked like they couldn't make up their mind so that was the second store and then I went ahead and went to one last place which luckily was steps away from the second store and it was there inside of the Goodwill that I found this little number and my mom was with me and I was already like this is it and she was not so convinced but that didn't stop me because I had a vision and I knew it was going to work. I just needed to look past the really cheap, terrible, I don't even know what you would call these. It's, they're not buttons. They're not really clasps. It's almost like the attachment that you sometimes have on a purse that was made up to look like it belonged on a sweater, which in my opinion, well, it doesn't belong in any sweater I'm going to wear. I'll just say that. And so it came home with me and I believe I paid a grand total of like $7 and like 40 cents or something like that. And then it was time to get to work. Speaking of work, let's jump into Eleanor's early career in Hollywood. When she got to Hollywood, she wasn't an immediate overnight success cast in blockbusters. She sat around while they figured out what to do with her, and then for the next three years, was put in B-movies playing supporting nice girl roles. Basically, the studio didn't know what it had and didn't realize it until they cast her in Between Two Worlds as Paul on Reed's young wife. From there, she started to get leading roles, not necessarily meteor roles, but ones that allowed her to start making a name for herself. She used her experience as a character actress from her stage training to bring added depth to her new typecast as ingenue and leading lady characters. Now, I'll get more into her movies in the next video, but just wanted to say that as Eleanor Starr grew, so did her aversion to the Hollywood treatment. She basically was not into the whole Hollywood scene at all. While she may have worked in Hollywood, she was not of Hollywood. She was not a part of the regular circle of social gatherings. In a 1955 article for Photoplay, Eleanor said, Other than my family, that's the most important thing in my life, she said. 
I never go to nightclubs and skip parties, the big ones that is, when I can do it gracefully. I don't like them. It seems to me that most of the people at these affairs are unhappy. They must have some escape from themselves, I suppose, and find it in crowds. For me, there's too much good music to hear, too many books waiting to be read, and thank heaven, so much work. While Eleanor had always dreamt of being a Hollywood actress, there was another dream equally important, becoming a mother. In this era when women were generally thought of as ideally having one career in the home, that of mother and wife, Eleanor acknowledged in multiple interviews how she required both in order to feel like her whole self. There's one side of me that yearns to live in a small town, be married, and raise lots of children, is the way Eleanor categorizes it. And yet I love acting. I don't think I could exist and not be an actress. Strangely enough, I never think of myself as an actress. I think of myself as being two people. I don't pretend to thoroughly understand either. Others seem to find me a great deal more confusing than I have ever appeared to be to myself. So once I had the sweater home, the very first thing I needed to do was to remove those weird clasps. So I've got my seam ripper out and my trusty assistant who is overseeing my work and eventually decides that she's gonna make biscuits on the sweater <laughs> as her contribution. And so um, I eventually had to put a stop to that because hello, claws. So here I am diverting her attentions casually so that she does not feel like, uh, you know, she doesn't have autonomy. Uh, and now that I have ripped off more of the seams, I ended up having to switch to putting basically a direct light on it because it was really hard to see where the stitching was to the black knit. So um, I was just kind of feeling my way through this and unfortunately when I went to remove this at some point either when I pulled it off there was a hole already there or I put it in there I don't know but there it is so I had to uh, wing it and fix it so here's an up close and personal shot of the terrible clasps and the terrible quality faux leather that is just peeling away. And when I was removing this clasp, I was sure to be extra mindful that I didn't catch any of the knit while I was removing it. And so my plan after removing this was to figure out how to put buttonholes into this knit using my sewing machine and then attach some white buttons to match Eleanor's. While I continue to tear that to shreds, let's go and take a closer look at Eleanor's role as the Baroness. Now it's time to address the elephant in the room. I'm mixing metaphors again, because unlike what the initial intro quote about Paul Newman and his popcorn said, Eleanor's work in this film is crucial to the success that this film has, and no doubt will continue to have for years to come. So how did she become involved in a movie musical for the first time in her career? Eleanor had worked with Robert Wise, the director of The Sound of Music, in a film in 1950 called Three Secrets. Wise had this to say about her casting and how she was always his first choice. Eleanor Parker came to mind right away. I always liked and respected her for her beauty and the range of her acting ability. Now, growing up and watching the movie, I never liked the bareness, and that makes perfect sense for a child to feel that way. Now, as an adult watching the film, I'm much more aware of the subtleties which Eleanor brings to her portrayal of the Baroness. She's a Baroness. She is a woman in 1930s Austria, and with such a title, she is expected to behave of her class, and she does so gracefully. Even her insults and digs are veiled and slightly aloof, dropped so casually that the recipient may not even catch it themselves. She understands the social pressures of what she's expected to be, married, and knows she's a target because of her title and wealth. When your husband died, he left you with a terrible fortune. 
Oh, Max, you really are a beast. And, unfortunately, she's a woman of a certain age, ugh, and therefore her options are limited and or running out. She wants love. Well, what would you call me, Georg? She wants safety, and the captain is who she sees herself being with. You're gonna hate me for this. In a way, my savior. Oh, how unromantic. Until she sees something else. She fights to the end in her own way. Now where is that lovely little thing you were wearing the other evening when the captain couldn't keep his eyes off you? Diverting at the last moment. She plays off her breaking heart with finesse and nudges the captain in the direction of Maria. Somewhere out there is a young lady who I think will never be a nun. Before gracefully taking her exit with her iconic line, Honestly, she could have had zero lines in the scene and we all would have still understood every bit of what she was going through. Simply put, the film wouldn't be the same without the superb Eleanor Parker. Fun fact, her elusiveness only grew after she retired. When she was in her 80s, someone heading up a Sound of Music festival in Salzburg hunted down her son to ask him if she would consider being a part of it. Her response to him was just to say she had died, but later settled for a little white lie, saying that her health wouldn't allow her to go on such a strenuous trip. Can you see me? <laughs> okay, hello. I already have this. Oh, what is that? Okay, so you can kind of see me. Kind of not. Because I already have the camera set up to film me hand sewing, I should say, hand sewing the buttonholes, which is something that I have never done before until today. So I'm hand sewing these buttonholes because I tried to do it on my machine and it was not going to work. That's not gonna work. That's just sewing on the same spot. Son of a bitch. <sighs> so, here we are, trying to hand sew buttonholes. Something I have never done before because I've had a machine. Now, normally a knit sweater like this wouldn't have buttonholes put in after it was created. The buttonholes would have actually have been sewn into as a part of the pattern, not sewn, knitted into the pattern as it was being created. So this is really unknown territory. This is, I'm sure, some sort of like blasphemy to knitting, but my options are limited. So we're gonna try this one. I tried the other one, didn't work. So let's try this one because it's all I got. So I've sat up here, gonna put on a cozy movie. I've got all of my hand sewing gear set up over here and uh, this will go by for you very quickly, but for me, this is probably going to be hours. I think I have seven buttonholes to do. Mm. Okay, better get to work. Hand sewing the buttonholes actually turned out to be okay. I had a couple of things on my side that were pretty forgiving. One being that I was sewing buttonholes with black thread onto a black knit. And the second being that it was a black knit. So you really can't see the sewing job that I did. And I'm grateful for that. <laughs> Oh, and the white buttons that I picked out are from Joann's and I think they're a pretty close match.
Thank you so much for coming along on this journey of recreating an inspired look by Eleanor Parker. This is just the first in a set of three videos following her legacy, so please be sure to like this video and subscribe and turn on notifications so that you'll know when the next video comes out where I'll be recreating a different look of hers and continuing on with telling her story. Likewise, I also have videos of other focuses that come out on this channel, particularly dream roles, where I feature a role that I would love to play one day, and I take you along on the journey of creating the costume, preparing a song sung by the character, and pulling it all together in a performance at the end of the video. But I must My next one of those will be dropping soon as well, so please be sure to come along for the ride and see, see what it's like to create a dream role. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my video to reach a greater audience of those who also enjoy sewing and singing and acting and storytelling and old Hollywood and vintage and did I miss anything? and the likes. All right, I will see you all in the next one. Bye.